All right. Welcome to the personal productivity lecture. I intend eventually this will be productivity one and then we'll have another productivity two. Um, this one's going to focus on the work of David Allen, author of Getting Things Done. This is a venerable text in the personal productivity literature. It's been around for over 20 years, uh, has a huge following, huge online community. Um, and what David Allen's trying to do is give you a set of tools to kind of make progress um, in your life and to be able to manage all the different kind of commitments that you have. So let's start off and just ponder personal productivity for a second. So our monkey friend here is thinking about how many mangoes can I eat in a day? How many mangoes should I try to eat? And I want you to do something similar. So rate yourself on a scale from one to 100, one being not terribly productive and 100 being very productive. Kind of think about where you fall. Okay, so I'd suggest that lots of times we tend not to focus on that. We're just kind of focusing on the things that we're dealing with. But I want you to kind of, for today's lecture, reflect back on kind of how you tend to approach work and commitments and how effective you are at getting things done. Okay, so why is this important? Well, obviously you could accomplish more if you're more productive. But there might be some side benefits that you that you're not thinking about. One is that you might be less stressed from worry if you have some effective techniques. You might have a greater sense of control over your life and you might have better life outcomes. Uh, might have more income, you might be happier, you might leave a more impressive legacy. But there's some other things too in terms of what you can do for other people. I would suggest that if you're more effective, you might be even a better parent. Now, certainly, Parenting starts with a good dose of love and respect for the child. But I can just pick on myself for a second. There are some things that if I had been a little more planful, a little more organized, I could have delivered some better outcomes for my son. So I don't think I've done a bad job, but I'm just trying to suggest that even in like personal relationships, if you bring some thinking and effort to the, and some techniques, um, you can oftentimes deliver things that you wouldn't otherwise um, deliver for somebody else. I'd also have you think that um, there's a difference between uh, what's going on now uh, for most of you who are, are younger um, in college versus what's going to happen later in life. So in college, you can kind of be focused. Maybe you have work, have some things to do with your parents um, and have school, but those the number of domains in which you need to be effective just increases as you get older. So you might be on a nonprofit board. You might have a leadership role at um, your religious institution. You might get involved in politics and have some some community organizing kind of work to do. Um, you might have children to keep track of. Um, but all those kind of things are going to add to to add to your commitments and, and make it more important that you're able to keep track of those commitments and make progress on them. So one way of saying this is there's not a syllabus for life. So I think some ways um, I and the rest of the educational uh, establishment um, kind of engage in something dysfunctional in that we always give you a specific syllabus and we're very clear about what the expectations are. That's great in many ways because it helps you know what you need to do well but it's not asking you to define what success is for you. And life doesn't come with a syllabus. It doesn't tell you what the most important assignment is. It doesn't tell you where you should spend your time or how you're going to get graded. Um, you kind of got to make up that, that plan on your own. So one last thing, I was have you suggest or have you think about who's the most productive person you know? What are they like and what makes them that way? That can give you some insights, um, some, help you learn some things. Okay, so some basic assumptions that uh, I'm going to roll out. One is that uh, productivity is not magical. It's not just that some people can get stuff done and other people can't. There's some basic laws at work. So when I think about, I always find just the arrangement of leaves really amazing. Um, that they can look random, but if you look carefully... It seems like the plant is maximizing its exposure to sunlight 
um, by the way the different leaves are arranged. So even in a, in a system that may appear random, um, oftentimes there's some deeper logic at work. Um, so for plants, there's this logic of how can, how can I maximize the surface area relative to the sunlight? So similar with productivity, it may just seem that a lot of people get stuff done, or some people can really get stuff done, but there's some natural strategies there, so there's some deeper truths that I think we can discover. Okay, and I would also suggest that um, when you're thinking about effectiveness, we're really talking about two things. One, we're talking about doing the right things, which is the macro view, but we're also talking about doing things right, which is kind of the micro view. So there's a story that gets to this, and this is a story that Stephen um, Covey told. But imagine some leader in the jungle who's taking the team, and they're slashing, and they're um, busily and productively building this trail that is going to get to where they want to go. Uh, but after a while, some people start getting having some questions about, is this really what we're supposed to be doing? And let's say someone climbs a tree, and she discovers that, hey, we're in the wrong jungle. So what seems like progress on the ground may, from a broader perspective, a more reflective possession, uh, perspective, may, it may not be. And so just one thing to keep in mind is efficiency is not the same thing as effectiveness. Effectiveness requires that you've kind of reflected on and figure out and know what's most important, and then efficiency can help you kick in and get there. So um, I'm just going to touch on Covey, give you a flavor for that. Um, then we're going to spend most of our time on David Allen. But Covey has the seven habits of highly effective people. And um, he has these different principles or habits. And um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time here on the first three just with an example. But these are all extremely helpful. And the book is really good at giving you a bunch of examples and ways to think through them. So his second principle is begin with the end in mind. And one way to think about that is our little chipmunk friend, um, and this is a standard maze kind of problem, wants to get to the acorn. Well, some of you might know that there's this trick where if you start um, with the acorn um, and then navigate backwards from the acorn, it oftentimes is easier than starting cold from the outside. So the metaphor here is that if you begin with a clear picture of what you're trying to get to, oftentimes it's easier to get there. Another way of saying that is um, if you get a really clear picture of what success would look like, what the arrangement of facts on the ground would be, then it's easier to work backwards to get there. So there's a bit of reverse engineering in this, in that if you get real clear on where you want to go, it's easier to get there. So you could try to build something on your own, but... If there are some, um, if there's some things out there that you could study and understand how they work and get a clearer picture of where you want to go, you'll be better off. Okay, so let's relate some of Covey's stuff to the idea of the informational interviews. So some, some principles that, that this is drawing on is, one, you're trying to get a clear idea of what your end state is, what kind of career you want to have several years from now. Um, and it's also, I'm asking you to kind of put first things first. It's easy to, to stay focused on the academics and the homework that's due the next day and the test that's due next week. But ultimately, if part of what you do want to do after school is get a career, then really getting clear about what that is, is that's putting first things first. So not getting distracted about the everyday stuff, but making time for the long-term goals. The second thing I think is good about it is it makes you be proactive. You have to clarify what you're going to do. You have to go out and talk to somebody. And all that kind of stuff, um, those, those some people are naturally like that, but you can learn that too. You can develop those interpersonal skills, build your sense of agency and confidence. So what I'm trying to suggest to you is um, there's certain kind of high impact activities that if you make time for are going to make you more productive. And that's kind of the logic that Covey's trying to get at. Okay, 
So I'd also suggest that Covey's kind of more macro, right? Um, but once you've done that, it can help you with the more micro stuff. So getting things done can come in and help you clarify goals um, once you have a sense of where you want to get. It can help you identify next steps. And David Allen's logic suggests that you could, should create a project that's about career development. And in that project folder, um, either on a computer or on hard paper or in your mind, but you kind of map out what the next steps are that you're going to attend to um, in order to realize some of your um, career goals. Okay. So let's get into David Allen in, in particular here. So um, at the most broadest level, he's talking about you've got these different commitments. How do you manage them? So he wants to get you to master your workflow in terms of where you put your attention to get the most done. So the basic components um, are capturing information, clarifying what you need to do with different things, organizing your world into actionable tasks that you're going to do, reflecting on your to-do list, how am I doing on these different things from time to time, and then actually doing the work. But if you haven't done some clarifying and organizing, you can work your tail off and still not make a lot of progress. Okay, so it starts with, at the most basic level, the inbox and you we all have stuff in our life so it could be mail that comes in it could be messages from your parents it could be some item from amazon that you need to return but you've got this stuff that you need to deal with and alan's all about how do you process that stuff and decide what to do with it in a way that's efficient and effective so part of what he gets at is how do you track and act on different commitments different responsibilities, goals, and duties. So I'll just give you something to think about, but lots of times if I find a certain area of my life that's a mess, so say at my desk, um, it's oftentimes a reflection of, I haven't taken the time to pick up something and say, what am I gonna do with this? And for example, there might I have a pile of things that I'm gonna repair. If I'm honest, there's a lot of that I'm just not gonna get to. So it would be better to say, you know what? I'm not gonna get to this. I'm gonna either throw it out or I'm gonna give it away or, or whatever, go bury it in the yard. Um, but lots of times we get messes in our life because we haven't taken the time to really process something and figure out what's actionable here. Okay, so this is a diagram from the book. I'm breaking down a little bit more, but if you decided that something um, is something that needs action, one of his great tips is that um, you should have a rule that if it'll take you only two minutes to do something, go ahead and knock it out. So it could be replying to an email, it could be downloading a form that you need to fill out later, um, it could be uh, writing that email to somebody you contacted for an informational interview that you haven't heard back from, it could be maybe you, you know it's Mother's Day coming up and you haven't sent a card, it could be checking to see if you have a card and then you can say, if not, I'm going to get a card. But figuring out what you can get done in just two minutes, knock them out. Um, if you can't get it done in two minutes, you can either delegate it or you can defer it. So you put it on a calendar when you're going to get it done or you put it on one of your action lists about when you're going to get it done. But it doesn't just float around in your mind. You put it in a certain box. All right, and then this is not David Allen, but this is, um, I found this online, um, somebody applying his principles, and it, I think it does a good job of pulling a lot together in a one space. It's a little bit to digest, but I'm just gonna, um, trying to give you flavor here, trying to encourage you to do some independent learning and read more about this stuff on your own. But here's the big picture, and this is kind of the process view, and the, what's in orange here are the kind of the principles or the things you're ultimately trying to accomplish. So the way this guy organizes it is you're stockpiling stuff as it comes in. You're trying to capture everything. Then you're going to clarify uh, who 
clarify uh, what needs to happen. You don't just leave it amorphous. You figure out here's where it needs to go. So there's some organizing that goes on that comes down to making plans, having a tickler system where you know you're going to be reminded of something at a certain point, putting something away in a reference folder, etc. cetera. Um, that's the organizing. There's a review component for from time to time. You step back and you look at what the projects you have going and saying, am I making the progress that I need to make? What's the next step? Make sure I always know what that next step is. Then there's the engaging, the doing the actual work, um, and the um, a planning as well. So taking stuff in, figuring out what you're going to do with it, and having actionable items on lists that you can process. Okay, and then I just want to dive into a few of these a little deeper. So the, the capturing, you want to have something where you always have something to write on or a phone place, something on your phone where you can leave yourself a message. But you got these different things that can capture ideas and things that need to get done and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and the idea is you, you never tell yourself, oh, I'm going to add that to my list later. You write it down so your mind isn't constantly trying to remember different kinds of things. So that's the capturing part that's, that's really important. Then there's the clarifying. So it's not, you don't want to have floating in your mind the idea that, oh, I need to get new tires or I need to do something about that grade in biology. You want to clarify specifically what you're going to do. So it, instead of saying, I'm going to plan a vacation, you kind of say, okay, I need to research flight costs versus driving costs. What's the difference? But figure out what that, the actual step is that you can do that you can, when you've done it, you'll know you've done it and you can check it off. Um, so that clarifying is really essential. Then there's that reflecting process that's important as well. Um, lots of times we're so busy engaged in actions that we're just kind of going from one crisis to the next. But the reflecting really asks us to step back and say, am I making progress on this? Um, is there something that needs to be less vague, um, that needs to be broken down into specific steps? But if you have something like a, a weekly time where you can do that, kind of look through all your responsibilities and commitments, um, that's a really good way to make sure that nothing is going to fall off your radar. Okay, so to review just some key components here of getting things done, um, you want to capture stuff. You want to clarify the things that you need to do. You want to organize stuff into actionable items, specific tasks that you can know when you've done and check off. You want to reflect on whether or not you're making progress, where you are in the different projects that you have. And you want to have time to engage in and get work done. So I just encourage you to do some self-assessment and say, figure out maybe one area where you think you can improve and develop a strategy for doing that and, and giving it a whirl. My dog decided he needed to come up. Can you say hi, Mabel? Hello. Hello. Okay. All right. I do want to mention um, that um, these uh, getting things done is a, a bunch of good principles, but there is science behind it, and it's not necessarily expressed in David Allen's work, but um, I can point you to psychology that explains why some of his, his principles um, work as well as they do. So... Um, if you think about like from Covey, begin with the end in mind or with um, the um, David Allen's idea of getting to specific actions. Um, this all goes back to this theory of goal setting theory, which comes out of the industrial organizational psychology literature. And there's some research on what makes goals effective and why they work. So how goals work is one thing they do is they direct af and they direct attention and effort towards essential actions. Goals say, hey, these things are important. So they get you to attend to them. The second is if you're really focused on a goal, it, it displaces a lot of distractions. You don't get sucked into rabbit holes that don't have anything to do with your goal. It also uh, creates this discrepancy between where you are and where you need to be. And that's motivating. So the simplest idea is if I need to write 400 words this morning on the book I'm trying to write, 
and I've only written 200 words, I know I have 200 more to go before I can be finished. So those discrepancies are motivating. It can also help you pull relevant knowledge into awareness. As soon as I've articulated a clear goal, I might say, okay, who can help me with this? And then I realize, oh, this friend of mine is really good at this. And so I could talk to them. But until I had that goal in my mind and had, had, had played it out, it wasn't, I wasn't clear about, uh, I wasn't, didn't see that connection. And then the other thing is it can motivate a search where you kind of try to dig up new resources. So these are how goals work. Okay, when are they successful? When do goals work? Well, they know that there's certain things that make them um, have a lot more traction. One is if they're specific. Vague goals like do your best doesn't motivate a lot of action because it doesn't have a, get enough traction. Goals that are difficult tend to be more motivating because there's a wider discrepancy between where you are and where you need to go. But related to that is commitment. If you have a goal that's so outlandish that you're not committed to it, that's not going to work either. So just some things that we've seen people do to try to help with this is if you have people participate in setting their own goals. If you're accountable to somebody else, I have actually called my brother up before and say, hey, I need to get this done by this and this a date. Can you hold me accountable? Um, if you frame things as challenges versus threats, threats might make you not want to work on it, but if it's a challenge, you might engage better. Also planning for obstacles. If you stop and think, what are the three biggest things that might get in the way of this? You're much more likely to hit that goal um, and stay committed to it. And then this one should be obvious, but feedback. If your goal is to shoot a bullseye at a target and you can't see whether or not you hit the target, those goals, that goal isn't very motivating. You need feedback, either whether or not you hit the target, whether or not um, your boss is happy with your performance, whether or not you got the certain grade on the test, um, et cetera. So these four things make it much more likely that a goal is going to be motivating. Okay, so a few more um, on to some application kind of things. I want you to think about what kind of things get in your way. What are some of your gremlins and demons? So this goes to, I'm just trying to, in terms of making you committed to looking at productivity, one of the things we can do is look at some obstacles. So are there certain kind of tasks that you have problems with, certain kinds of situations? But this is one of those things, if you know what you're scared of or know what your limits are, it's easier to get around them. So I'll just be honest with mine is if it's an ambiguous situation and it's not clear what I'm supposed to do, that sometimes can cause me to delays. If I'm afraid of making a bad choice or if um, I haven't made progress so far that I'm not very, very motivated to continue on. Okay, so a few more random tips. Um, one, getting a list of actions is really helpful. So uh, you might have a to-do list, but make sure those things are actionable. Um, you got to have some reminder system that you trust. Um, it could be a calendar. It could be something you set up on your phone. Um, I have a thing called follow up then where I can email myself and it'll show up however, whatever I specify in the future. And then trigger lists are also helpful. A trigger list is kind of specific projects or things that you need to check up on, on a regular basis. So one of the things that I'm responsible now for is my 88-year-old mother lives near me. And I'm the only real family that's close. And so I need to kind of have in my mental state, I'm always kind of checking in, what does my mom need? Um, and it's easy to get distracted. And so those trigger lists can bring you back. So think about if you had a trigger list, certain things that you need to keep track of, what would be on that? All right, random tips number two. Um, it's helpful. Uh, Alan talks about this, about choosing actions in the moment. So there's certain times where I have some free time, but I have very little energy. So having some things on my to-do list that are not terribly taxing, that can be a good time to knock those out. But Alan suggests we have all these tasks that we could do, and then in deciding what to work on, we 
examine the context. Where am I? Do I have access to the information I need? Like, am I at home or am I at work? What time's available, how much energy available, and how important it is. So that's oftentimes helpful to me is I can kind of figure out when I should be working on what. So an application is here is think about a time of your day or a piece of your day that you could better utilize. So where do you kind of fall off um, the wagon? So I'll just give you an example. There's sometimes I have a schedule where I come home and I'm supposed to exercise. Well, if I come home and I sit in the lazy boy and open the computer, I may not get to exercise for another half hour. And it's usually that time is more spent piddling than actually working on stuff I need to get done. So um, think about what time could you utilize better and then how might what you might get done during that time. So just to give you an example, there are people that have written novels just as they're riding the train to work, right? So you can find time that you could work on stuff um, and get certain kinds of work done. All right. The, I think, yeah, the last thing I'll have you think about is think about your career development, what you want to do eventually. What's, what, if you make that a project, what are some of your next action steps? What are things that you need to do? So it could be that maybe you need to do some more informational interviews. Maybe you need to look into some different graduate programs. Maybe um, there's some internet research that you need to do. Uh, maybe there's some journaling where you kind of process through what some of your thoughts and feelings are. But um, take that on as a project. Define what success would look by look like and really identify the, the actions that you could take and set up some kind of tickler system where you don't go a week where you haven't kind of reviewed where you stand on that goal and make yourself aware of what the, some of the next steps are. Okay, well, I hope you have found that useful. Um, that is all we have for this productivity lecture, and I thank you for your attention. All right, take care.